Hi, my name is Sean Jones. I'm a member of the Web Science and Digital Libraries Research Group at Old Dominion University with Michael Nelson and Michelle Weigel. I'm also a member of the Research Library Prototyping Team at Los Alamos National Laboratory with Martin Klein. And today I'm going to talk about automatically selecting striking images for social cards. This work is part of the Dark and Stormy Archives project, where we take web archive collections of thousands of documents, feed it through an automated solution, and then produce a story that conveys understanding at a glance for this collection. And we're interested in summarizations and visualizations of documents. And so social cards provide a visual summary of the content behind a URL. In this case, we know that this URL will take us to a document that will provide us directions from Old Dominion University to Los Alamos National Laboratory, because that's what the card helps us understand. And social cards consist of different units, like a page title, a description, and a striking image, and a domain name. In this particular example, the page title tells us that we're going to get a page about COVID-19 from the WHO. In the description, we can see that there's a disease situation dashboard. If we had some doubt as to whether or not this content was legitimate, we can look at the domain name, which tells us that it comes from who.int. And finally, we have the striking image, which is not merely decorative. The striking image is another way to convey a summary of the underlying content. In this case, we have a picture of a map with circles of different sizes in different countries. And we know we're talking about COVID-19 cases, so we be believe that there's a visualization in the page that we'll get to if we click on this card. And social cards allow resources to compete for clicks, like this Nature article on the left here that only has a title and no striking image and no description. But this disinformation source shared on the right has a, has a title of doctor with bioweapons expertise calls COVID-19 vaccines weaponized medicine. And then there's a person in a lab coat and it looks very official and very, very professional. And so which of these is more appealing to someone with poor information literacy skills? This is also a case of the truth is paywalled, but the lies are free. Now cards are generated based on the HTML metadata that authors provide. Facebook has its own standard called Open Graph Protocol, so all of its fields begin with OG colon. Twitter has its own standard called Twitter Cards, and all of its fields begin with Twitter colon. So in order to specify what title should appear in the card on Facebook for your page, you insert OG colon title and then the value for that particular field. The same thing for description and image and so on. So this brings us to our first research question. What is the distribution of HTML metadata elements in news articles and scholarly publications published on the web? If this metadata is prevalent and of high quality, then we can rely on it. If not, then we, we have to develop methods to fill in the missing metadata so that we can produce good summaries, so we can produce good cards. So we analyzed 198,523 news articles captured by the Internet Archive from 1998 to 2016. And we took the different metadata fields and put them into different categories. And we found that Open Graph Protocol and Twitter cards experienced enormous growth as soon as they were introduced. Thus, news article publishers clearly want to produce cards to drive clicks to their own content. And prior to 2010, these standards did not exist, which can, corresponds to 150 billion documents in the Internet Archive. So that means 150 billion documents are sitting there and require some sort of automated summarization so that we can understand them. And we evaluated the HTML pages of 110,900 scholarly articles. That's 100 articles each from 1,109 journals. And we found that 77.86% of them can produce a title, description, and image on Facebook. And this looks good until we look at the images that are presented by the cards. 74% of scholarly publications use publisher and journal logos as striking images, and 52% reuse the same image for all of their articles. This is not summarizing the underlying content. This is advertising for the journal or advertising for the publisher. But for news articles, most striking images are of article content, and those that repeat across articles tend to be author photos. And so we have different behavior for scholarly publications versus news articles. So because scholarly publications don't seem to have a lot of good striking images, even though many of them have striking images, and because we have so many news articles that were captured by the Internet Archive prior to 2010, we need to produce our own metadata. And so we want to get to the point where we have examples like you see on this page, like a good example for news here on the left, where you have a blizzard, you have snow, you have trucks, 
And the title is t of the of the article is Blizzard 2015, what you need to have in your car now. So we know what this particular news article is about. We know what we're going to get to if we click on it. And on the right, we have a title and we see the words like MRI and glioma. And I know what MRI is, but I may not know what a glioma is. So this sounds like something medical. However, I get more information by looking at the striking image on the left, which is pictures of brains. And so I now know that this particular article is going to give me information about brains with MRIs and gliomas, and I'll probably learn what those are. So this brings us to our second research question. To get to this point, what approaches and image features are best suited to automatically selecting striking images for news articles and scholarly publications? So if no metadata exists in a page, we can select a striking image from the images available in that page. So I took a screenshot of a Wall Street Journal article here titled, Choosing the Right Healthcare Plan, and I outlined all of the images in the page in red. But which one is the one chosen by the author? How would a machine know which one to choose for its particular social card if there were no striking image specified in the metadata? So our generic selection approach has three steps. Score each image in the document by some approach. Sort the list of images by descending score, and then choose the image at the beginning of the list. So on the left, or in the middle, we have sorted all of the images in the page by color count. And we see the one with the most colors is the man standing in front of the brown menu. But we also have on the right sorted by classifier probability. And in that particular, for that particular approach, the person uh, giving the injection was the image that was chosen. And so we needed ground truth metadata to evaluate these approaches. So we sampled from two data sets to determine which approaches work best. And both of these data sets provide ground truth in the sense that the image that the author had chosen is specified in the metadata. So for news articles, we chose 37,000 articles from the newsroom data set because news articles tend to select images that represent their stories. For scholarly publications, we chose 198,000 scholarly articles from PLOS One because PLOS One's submission guidelines encourage authors to choose their own striking image after acceptance. Now, so now that we have approaches, we have uh, data to evaluate them, we need features. And a social card creation service needs to be able to select a striking image in close to real time. So we can cons consider things that were easily calculatable by image libraries, like byte size and size in pixels and number of colors. So we refer to these as base features. But scholarly publications also provide us with other features like the figure position. We can rank all of the captions to see perhaps which figure is most important. We can also select the section where the image was first referenced and use that as a feature. And we evaluate our approaches with precision at one and mean reciprocal rank. Precision at one allows us to answer the question, does the prediction approach choose the right image? And mean reciprocal rank allows us to answer the question of, if it failed, how far off was it? So using this example with the color count, the image chosen by the approach is the man standing in front of the brown menu. But the correct image is the fifth one on the bottom, because that was the image chosen by the author. However, we can evaluate which images are perceptually similar by the p-hash method. And so we compute the perceptive hashes of all of the images, and we, can, we find the one that is most similar. And that's how we know that the second one is equally as good for the card. And so we evaluated many different approaches, and we found that random forest with base features produces uh, the, the correct image, the image chosen by the author 83% of the time for news articles. And random forest with base features and figure position produces the image chosen by the author 78% of the time for scholarly articles. So in conclusion, news articles quickly adopted social cards once the metadata was available. And prior to 2010, these card standards didn't exist. And this corresponds to roughly 150 billion documents in the Internet Archive that will need some sort of automatic summarization or striking image prediction. And news article metadata has striking images drawn from the article, whereas scholarly publishers favor company or journal logos, not really summarizing the document. So for predicting striking images based on the content of the document, random forest with base features perform best for news articles with a P at 1 of 0.83 but we had to bring in figure position in addition to the base features to get to a P at one of 0.78 for scholarly publications. So for more information, please see the Dark and Stormy Archives project at this URL.
Thank you.